Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships Blitz with Terry. Today, we are finally looking at the Tier 10 German heavy cruiser, the Hindenburg. Now, the Hindenburg, to nobody's great surprise, did not exist. The last German cruiser in the game that actually existed would be the Admiral Hipper at Tier 8. The Rune didn't exist at Tier 9, and neither did the does the Hindenburg on Tier 10. There was, however, a ship named Hindenburg, in the First World War, SMS Hindenburg is a Dörflinger class battle cruiser, and she was relatively late in the First World War. I, we don't have the ship in the game, so I might as well use that one. Uh, relatively late okay, construction was relatively late in the First World War that she didn't see a huge amount of action anymore. But uh, she was the last ship to sink when the German fleet was scuttled. Because at the end of the war, the German fleet was interned at Scapa Flow in in um, in the Great Britain, and the, the 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 admirals considered that well um, somewhat of a <laughs> dishonorable defeat, I would say. So they actually planned to 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 do a tango and um, sail out and uh, basically get get killed, but take as much of the British fleet with them as they possibly could. The sailors had other ideas because they didn't want to die, <laughs> so they mutinied and they stopped the whole thing. But in the end, they wanted to prevent the ships to be landing in the hand of the British, and they'd rather see them at the bottom of the ocean. So they scuttled them, and uh, that has led to a very very interesting uh, modern issue because the, uh, for certain for certain instruments like geiger counters and similar things you need uh, a steel which isn't uh, contaminated by radioactivi uh, radioactivity and since we started doing things like nuclear tests a lot of the steel has actually been coming very very mildly but but noticeably contaminated with radioactivity which means that the instruments aren't as precise as they could be. So what people have been doing is they have been, well, looking for things that were mostly made out of steel that were constructed before people started dropping nukes on things. And, um, well, uh, as, it, as it happens, the Germans were kind enough to sink their entire fleet in front of the British harbour in relatively shallow water. So um, that is one of the major sources of uncontaminated steel for these precision instruments from these old ships. So, uh, you know, at, at least it did one good thing. And uh, not all the sailors were dying, which is, I guess, also a good thing. But back to the actual Hindenburg in-game. Um, as the rune, she's based or built around the premise that uh, or a design of a triple turret of the 203 millimeter uh, guns that we find in twin turrets on things like the Admiral Hipper. That was already the rune, only that the rune had one forward and two aft, which could cause a little bit of trouble because it's reasonably difficult to, to be aggressive with a German ship uh, when two thirds of its firepower is in the rear. And not being aggressive in a German ship just kind of feels wrong as well. So the rune was a bit odd. The rune, much more than the Hipper, was a long range ship. And to a degree that continues with the Hindenburg. So let's have a quick look at the at the data here. Now, obviously, um, this is a German cruiser, so she is reasonably well armored, I would say. Uh, we've got a citadel protection of sixteen point five percent. Just to compare compare that, that's better than on the Iowa. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it doesn't mean that she has the same armor as the Iowa, but. Uh, just as a percentage value, and I have no idea what that means in, in effect, but this is a reasonably well-armored cruiser. And the damage reduction is not bad either. Obviously, being a German ship, fire flooding, a little bit of an issue more so, but um, she is reasonably maneuverable for a tier 10 ship. They tend to often be not on the maneuverable side, but the main thing really about these things is the guns. Now, these are absolutely excellent guns. Uh, you get, I think they're actually the same, uh, exactly the same as on the Rune, although they seem to be ever so slightly less precise. Uh, that's just a gut feeling. I don't have any data to back that up. But um, they're still extremely excellent long-range guns. They do, uh, they have a 10-second reload, 
and uh, they do over a thousand points of alpha damage on the armor piercing, and you've got twelve of them. So you have a theoretical a theoretical alpha strike of twelve thousand points of damage on these things every ten seconds. Uh, that is pretty significant, <laughs> the amount of damage these things can dish out. Also, the other thing that sets her apart from the rune is that she actually has a usable set of torpedoes, because you could rush things with the rune and do a torpedo rush. The problem is the rune didn't have enough torpedoes to rush things with, because, um, well, you couldn't sink things and then you would be dead very quickly. Uh, not so much in the hidden book. So if you do find yourself getting into torpedo range of things, uh, you have a veritable amount of torpedoes. Actually, you have one more than a Shimakaze, <laughs> only that they're side-mounted, uh, to, to lob at people. Now, they are not particularly quick, and they don't have a particularly long range, but if you find yourself in a brawl, you can spew uh, a very large amount of torpedoes left, right, and center. The AA is pretty good. I mean, it's not American-level AA, and again, it's tier 10, so uh, that has to be taken into account. But she can take the... She's not an AA cruiser, but she can take the uh, occasional airplane down, especially that the small caliber AA actually has a very reasonable range of 2.4 kilometer. The surface detection is on the long side with almost 10 kilometers. But um, play style wise, this is... This ship works well both as a brawler and as a long range ship. So let me just say that. Uh, elite bonus. You can get main battery traverse speed, but then honestly, you could get that from a module. Much more interesting is the German special bonus that you only get in these ships, which is the improved main armor belt, which gives us more damage reduction and more citadel protection, which we've seen here. Damage reduction just gets applied to pretty much everything. So that's a, that's a useful stuff. Uh, it's... It's an interesting setup here. So I have set her up with, um, obviously with double steering as is traditional in my German cruiser lines. I would like to get the uh, propulsion mod, but um, I do find that I like but double steering more on these ships. Uh, main battery mod three for dispersion, because I did kind of get the feeling that she's just that little bit pre less precise than the rune. I mean, she is still extremely precise as a cruiser. But, uh, yeah, that's the thing. There's actually a legendary module um, for the Hindenburg. So you can get 8% main battery firing range as a, um, at the cost of 12% surface detection. So if we have a quick look at the base surface detection on the ship, she has a surface detection of 9.8 kilometers. So we're probably going to take um, an additional kilometer. So we'll be talking 10.8 or something. Um, not a trade-off I'm willing to make, really. Because, uh, again, this is a German cruiser, and I like um, I would have to trade both concealment, which makes me extremely visible early on in the game, kind of the Alaska, the original Alaska problem, and I have to trade the main battery mod 3, which gives me the, um, the improved dispersion at range. So I, I trade longer range for... Um, like If you want to play really a ranged setup, you could... You could do a thing like you put this one in to get 8% more range and you put the um, concealment mod <laughs> to kind of counterbalance the problem of the um, being being very, very visible uh, sort of thing. But uh, again, I, I like to get up close and personal with the ship anyway. So I don't I don't really consider that necessarily as a thing. I prefer, I prefer the uh, mod 3 because tier 10 is kind of a bit more range heavy in the meta. And um, it, is, it is good to be able to precisely get shots on target at range with these guns. So that's my setup on that. Um, supplies is just standard stuff, no surprises there. Uh, the commander. Now, I'm not sure. I don't think he existed, but I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be Maurer, and, uh, which, uh, which means Mason, but, and not Maru, Maru, Maru? Uh, It could be Maru. It, it'll be entirely possible that's the name, but uh, it kind of looks like it may have been a typo. But anyway, um, he's been he's been on this line since the rune, and um, he's still on retraining. So the, the battles I'm playing are actually only with <laughs> with the level four commander because the other skills are on retraining. Um, yeah, the skills you want, uh, obviously the marksman skill, and he, I, I do have the survivalist because I don't need uh, another precise aiming because I'm never playing the whole game on long range anyway. 
<laughs> so I'd rather take some more some more health. But yeah, obviously I want to get to the APCS eventually and uh, do some so able to do some serious damage. Alrighty, uh, last thing, what do we need to look at? Uh, the battle honors. So uh, what do we do here? 20 battles, easy. Um, 1.8 million damage, easy. Uh, 40 cruisers, definitely a thing we can do. So the Hindenburg can stand up to pretty much anything, uh, except for maybe aircraft carriers and a one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, uh, definitely 40 cruisers shouldn't be an issue. 90 enemy ships, it will just take a while, but we get there. It's, at least it's 90 ships and not 90 ships of a particular kind. And um, 105,000 points of damage, that is not a problem at all. We should be able to do that uh, occasionally without too much trouble. Now, I haven't put the historical camo on yet because this is tier 10 and they're expensive and I want to play my ship for a little bit before I decide that I will get that, but um, I think I will because I am thoroughly enjoying this ship. This is a very, very, very excellent ship, uh, which gives us additional main battery firing range. It gives us torpedo range, which is great because the 5.4 kilometers isn't, isn't that much. Well, I mean, it goes up to 5.6, uh, it's not huge, but it uh, gives us better traverse speed, which is also great and gives us better service detection. All very, very good things. So, um, yeah, an investment that might be worth it down the road. But, uh, yeah, um, that's the Hindenburg. So, let's get... I, I've got two games for you today because uh, they show off different kind of aspects of the ship. So, let's go. In the first battle, it's obviously top tier because we're tier 10. Uh, there's, it's a carrier battle, Haku versus Midway. And there's one bot on each each team, so we'll, they'll cancel each other out, really. But um, we do have a Smolensk, Worcester, and three destroyers on the enemy team. We're playing Fort Line on base capture. Now, if you're in a destroyer and there's a Mino and a Hindenburg on the enemy team, um, you're probably not going to have a great time. So uh, let, let's see let's see how this how this plays out. I'm spawning right flank, right next to one of the destroyers. So the very first thing we're going to do is, or the, the very first thing we're hoping for is that the carrier goes and spots the enemy DDs. So I'm going to start moving forward. I'm spawning here with the Benham and uh, see if we can get some... You see the surface detection isn't great to begin with and if, if that was a kilometer longer <laughs> I'd be spotted reasonably easily. But um, Benham might be AFK uh, which is unfortunate because I could really use him to do some to do some scouting up here. So let's see if I can ping him. Maybe that'll help. Hello. <laughs> Come. Are you coming? Uh, there's some aircraft coming in. So enemy aircraft are going center. Okay, we've got two destroyers, spo three destroyers spotted. Okay, so we've got one destroyer right flank. I knew that was going to happen. One destroyer left flank and one destroyer center. So the right flank DD is mine. That's why I'm going here. Um, just to make sure he doesn't come around. And uh, the enemy carrier seems to be focusing on the minor, which doesn't seem wise, but uh, okay. I mean, Mino has a pretty decent AA, and, um, oh well, uh, so Z is somewhere out there. Uh, Benham seems, seems to be AFK still. Uh, I'm not sure I want the battleship to follow me around here, because the enemy cruisers are still kind of clobbered there in the middle, so hopefully they all say, oh yeah, the Benham's awake, hello, welcome to the game. Uh, you haven't missed anything important, just in case you haven't been paying attention, or you have been AFK, um, there. There is should be the Z46, that's where we've seen it last. Uh, was it a 46? Can't remember. Um, and I'm spotted, so he's somewhere out here. There he is. Hello. <laughs> okay, uh, so you've made the cardinal error of starting uh, opening up your guns against the Hindenburg. So uh, you have have you to dropped your torpedoes? I don't know what the torpedo range on these things is, but um, uh, you know, you, you're going to regret that. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay, at this range I'm actually over-penetrating, so I do need to open up a little bit more, but yeah, Hydra up. Um, and yeah, he should really have known not to drop a, um, a German Hydro Cruiser. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there are the torpedoes. They're never going to hit me. So I want to open up a little bit. And um, so that's such that I can get full penetrations with my armor piercing. Because they should do almost a thousand damage. There we go. 970 points of damage. That's the damage reduction in place. And the carrier is going to keep him spotted. So 10, 10 kilometers is a good range. At this range, um, I can I can hit him. Carrier is dropping some torps on him, and um, yeah, that should be the end of the Z46. All right, good night. Uh, okay, we've lost our bot, uh, and I currently have nothing else to shoot at. The other two destroyers are left flank, 
So I'm going to say, I'm going to reorient into the middle. Right flank's clear. Nothing's coming down here because we would have spotted it by now. And we know the other two DDs aren't there. So that's just the bot. Oh, the Mino just got slapped by the bot, I think. Um, not sure what your plan is there, Mino, but uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Anyway, that bot won't live long, so I don't have nothing else to shoot at right now. I don't know where the rest of the team is. They're probably waiting for us to attack, but we're not, and they are not, so... Uh, it's, it's one of those battles. They can get a little bit defensive. Okay, Mino is running low on, on hit points, so I'm going to try and lend some AA cover, even though I'm not actually an AA cruiser. Plus, the Benham's coming around here as well. So, uh, see if we can get underneath the um, underneath the carrier uh, drop, uh, carrier planes, and uh, if, if we can... Okay, bot's dead. If we can find ourselves one of these destroyers. Uh, well, there's the gearing. Hello. Okay, let's deter him from coming anywhere closer. Because I don't want him to um, to lodge himself in these islands here. Uh, and um, uh, drop some drops through those. But my hydro is off, it's almost off cooldown. So some blind shots out at the gearing. And uh, just dropping some torpedoes through here just in case he gets any weird ideas and put the Hydro up in case uh, Gearing decides that he wants to drop some tops on us. But I don't see anything. I think I need to lead a little bit more. Still getting used to the um, to the, to the guns a little bit. Okay, uh, a couple of shots out. And the carrier again doing excellent work. Now there's a third destroyer somewhere. And you see this is what <laughs> this is what a Hindenburg can do to a, um, to a Gearing. Let's see if we can kill him. But I think he's just gone undetected. Uh, and uh, there's a Smolensk pushing through the middle. I'm not sure what he's thinking he's doing. But uh, uh, he's definitely chasing after our destroyer. And there's something lobbing shells across the islands from the right flank as well. So there may have been another cruiser coming down there. But um, yeah, Shima and Benham. So let's, uh, let's find that Smolensk and give him the good news. Hello. <laughs> Ah, deleting Smolensk is something I like doing. There we go, half of Smolensk is gone. <laughs> and the carrier is helping as well. Uh, there's some more planes coming, so again, a slight, slight AA duty here. Not not a huge amount, but... Um, and you see the, the dispersion isn't... I mean, it's that's 9 out of 12 shots, so it wasn't bad at any, at, uh, any meaning of the word, but um, it's not as tight as I remember the rune to be. Uh, can we delete the Smolensk? Oh, lucky bugger. <laughs> And yeah, I see the destroyer. I knew there was one on the left side, but um, I'm still fully in range of this thing because I do have a very good range on these guns. So uh, all I need to do is turn around and then uh, the carrier is doing, again, an absolute fabulous job on keeping these guys in check. Uh, keep shooting some aircraft down and we get some shots out at the Shima. So um, yeah, you're not gonna get away, Shima. And I think the Alsace is helping as well. Okay, Shima will be dead. Ah, Alsace takes him out. Well done, Alsace, okay. All right, that leaves one destroyer. That'd be the gearing that we pushed away. There's a cruiser on the right. Um, Alsace, you can probably deal with that. I can't remember what that was, but um, uh, I just want to make sure that the gearing doesn't get any funny ideas and is sneaking around. I mean, there's one minute left, so there's probably not a huge amount of uh, time left, but um, I'm not spotted. So if the gearing is lur lurking somewhere behind the islands here, um, no idea. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep the carrier busy and keep him from actually killing our destroyers because uh, the Benham, uh, he's getting torp, torp planes out. If the Benham isn't careful, he might be in for a drop. So let's see if we can just deter the carrier a little bit. And um, let's see if we can do something about that midway. Uh, he's going unspotted, but uh, I, see, I, I know where you are. And uh, still no sign of that gearing. I don't know where he went. Hey, you can actually see the planes. You can spot the planes starting even though you can't see the carrier. So good. Oh, there's the gearing. Yeah. All right, then. Um, well, oh, we'll deal with that one. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he's not even looking my way. And he's just kind of realized that he's in trouble. So um, even though I'm over penetrating at this range, I could switch to the high explosive, but the high explosive on the German ships is so bad that uh, I usually don't really bother, especially if I have this many guns. Some, some will full, full pen and that's the gearing done. So, okay. Um, We've done the job that we were supposed to do as a cruiser, I think. Uh, keep the fl keep the flanks clean. Absolute excellent gameplay by that carrier. Um, good directing and uh, good spotting. So uh, very well done. Yeah, and deserved. We've we've ke we've kept the flanks clean. We've done some some plane shooty down things, and we have uh, well, we've done fifty thousand points of damage. Not a huge amount, but. Um, classic destroyer, uh, classic ca destroyer counterplay, really. And with the range, 
and with the precise aiming active on the Hindenburg, uh, you are very, very, very deadly against destroyers. So in the second game, we have, um, again, one bot on, on each team. They can't cancel each other out. Um, Venezia, Moskva, Wooster, Moskva, and Double Friesland. Okay. <laughs> so lots of cruisers, but lots also lots of very, very dangerous ships. So let's, let's see how this goes. Uh, playing encounter, uh, which means we are... Probably again going gonna go a bit center. It's a very mobile enemy team. Not, um, no actual battleships to worry about. And uh, hopefully the Yamato can do a little bit in terms of, uh, you know, dropping shells on cruisers. That'd be grand. But um, very, very very mobile force, two destroyers and four cruisers. I don't count the bots. So what's that? Venezia, Worcester. Okay, the two of you can probably, especially Worcester, you can deal with any kind of Friesland coming down this way, right? You're in a Worcester. That's what you're made for. So I'm gonna go towards center uh, because something is gonna come around, uh, come around a little island, and I want to be able to cover both sides if I need to, uh, just to be, um, just to to maximize my impact. Because if I'm, I'm pushing down this flank here. There's a decent chance that um, well, if the enemy team pushes down the other flank, I'm pretty much useless. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go into the center and uh, just see see if we can find where they are. Okay, that's the bot battleship. Don't care about that one. Not even gonna give my position away for that thing just yet. And we should be. Yeah, no. Nah, just ignore it. It's a bot. Okay, that's much more interesting. Friesland. Hello, Friesland. Okay, he smokes up, but I see where he is. And at this range, I'm just gonna rain some shells onto him. So there we go. <laughs> That's 6,000 health gone from that Friesland that he doesn't see again anytime soon. Let's see if he's still there. Uh, yeah, he's still there. <laughs> That's 10,000 health. Okay, has he learned his lesson? Uh, has he learned his lesson? Uh, is he still there? Uh, no, he's, he's gone. <laughs> he didn't want anymore. Uh, what's our Smolensk doing, by the way? Why Why the heck is he, is he taking point in a Smolensk? Um, Okay, sure. Uh, blind shots out at the Worcester, but yeah, Worcester sits behind that island and Smolensk cannot lob back and Ven he's got a Venezia shooting at him and the Moscow, so he's now very dead. Ah, that's one Smolensk, uh, Smolensk down, so let's see if we can convince the Venezia of not coming anywhere near. Okay, um, Worcester, you can deal with that Friesland there if you have to. Uh, you, you're probably in the right ship for that. Now I'm taking fire from probably... Friesland and or Wooster, but um, that Friesland is he's trying the same thing again. Okay, uh, sure. <laughs> and he gets himself taken out by the bot secondaries. Okay. <laughs> Should I learn your lesson there? Uh, Wooster is still doing the set things on fire thing that Woosters do. And don't underestimate these things, by the way. Um, if an incompetent player, a Wooster has a frightful DPM. So uh, we're just uh, dropping some things on the Venezia, but um, there's three of us over here with the bot, and it looks like our Worcester is a little bit lonely there on the right side, um, hanging back. Uh, actually, no, that's not, is that? No, that, the bot's over there, okay. So that's the Yama in the center there, okay. So um, Yama is very aggressive there, but um, against cruisers, I can understand that, because uh, uh, you're never gonna hit anything at long range anyway. Okay, we're, we're, um, we're whittling down the... Yeah, that Worcester there, I'd like to kill him, but he's behind an island. There's very little I can do. Uh, I can't rush around the left side because there's a Venezia over there and there's double Moskva sitting in the enemy cap circle. Uh, we're going to have to do something about that Worcester, but right now there's not much I can do. Uh, Z, you should not be engaging Worcester, really. You should you should try to stay, to stay undetected, honestly, and see if you can get some torp drops onto stuff, but... Um, uh, I'm gonna drop some torps here just in case Worcester decides that he wants to come out. Uh, this, it's an off chance, but I need to clear out these Moskvas first. So yeah, we can't lob that. We don't have the same elevation as Worcester does. So put her in reverse and start fighting the Moskva. Uh, Moskva, a dangerous ship, really, but uh, I'm, in Hinden I'm in Hindenburg, so uh, I'm, I'm not super afraid of that thing. I'll put her in reverse, so yeah, she, she can hit me, but... Um, she can't do a whole lot of uh, a whole lot against me. I, I can't push any further because because there's double Moscow over there. So uh, and it's still that Worcester sitting behind the island, so he's not doing anything right now. Um, Venezia is still alive. 
So that's frustrating. We're one ship down right now, so we do need to kill something. And I can't push out into the wood. I can't outflank the Worcester until these Moskvas are dead. So uh, just ignore him for now. There's not much we can. What what are you doing? You're running into a crossfire of Moskva and Venezia in a Worcester. Why are you here? You're in no. Oh gosh, you're in no health. <laughs> okay, so that's one Moskva down. Um, okay, he's gone. There's still another Moscow over there, and the Worcester still exists. We're e even on ships. Um, okay, Venezia uh, takes out that, takes out our Worcester predictably, so let's see if we can push that Moscow again uh, far enough away that I can actually finally engage that Worcester that's sitting behind the island. That's Venezia Torps. Yep, yep, I know. I don't need a Hydro to see those coming. And um, if you've noticed, that Worcester starts shooting armor piercing at me, so that's, uh, that's the first indication that he knows what he's doing. Now... I know that uh, I'm just going to drop some torps in his direction, just in case, because I want to get behind the island. I can't push into both of them, I need to push Moscow away first. Um, just in case he comes around, I might drop some port some, some torps in his direction, but I don't think he, he will. He looks like he knows what he's doing. So if, if a Worcester starts, uh, a Worcester at point blank range with armor piercing has probably round about the same DPM that I do. So. Um, Okay, Moskva is still shooting at me, but Moskva is shooting high explosives. So let's... All right, we're even on ships. It's it's one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, let's see if we can kill the Worcester without dying. Because while we're still taking... Sh we are st still taking high explosives from the Moskva, and I don't want to be set on fire by the Moskva. It can burn me down from there. So I need to push into that, into that Worcester here and see if I can kill him. Uh, of course, he sees me coming, and he knows I'm coming, but he's reasonably low on health. Um, that We should have round about a similar DPM. I sent some torps out just in case he decides he wants to come around and fight, but no, he doesn't. So I get my forward turret around, double citadel, that's what I want. Now the question is, I'm on 10,000 health. I'm taking hits from both Moskva and Worcester. If I can kill him before he can fire, then I know he fired. <laughs> so we take each other out. Ah, oh, that could have gone better, but... Um, uh, yeah, and our Yamato is uh, getting burned down by the Friesland, so that's unfortunate. Um, ah, so close and yet so far, but uh, this is what you live for in a German cruiser. Right? <laughs> Takes out the Friesland, but it's going to be burned down, so... Um, uh, that's what you live for in a German cruiser. Um, you get in there and, and you fight. That, that was really good positioning of the Worcester. I mean, if he didn't have the backing from the Moskvas, um, I would have killed him twice over, but uh, just couldn't push around that corner. But this is what you can also do in a Hindenburg against um, enemy cruisers. You can really, really shred them to bits. We've seen this with uh, the Worcester now and also with uh, Venezia in another game that I featured a bit ago. But yeah, extremely well played. Um, uh, bo both, both teams, really. I mean... Smolensk could have been a little bit less aggressive. I think that was a bit much, especially that there are so many rapid-firing cruisers out there. But, um, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, um, anyway, GG, that was a great game. So, Hindenburg. Um, I love this ship, honestly. This is a really, really, really good ship. She has, uh, She's not super rapid-firing, but she hits hard both at range and at close range. And you can stick to the armor piercing against pretty much anything. Uh, you will overpenetrate destroyers at close range, and you will have somewhat of a bit of trouble actually penetrating battleships at long. But um, uh, you can play play a little bit with a high explosive. It's not a great high explosive, really. You don't do a huge amount of damage. I personally, honestly, would probably even stick to the armor piercing at bat against battleships at long ranges, unless I'm probably firing at Yamatos or something extremely heavily armored, or like German battleships, then I'll switch to the high explosive. But um, I'm thoroughly enjoying the ship. Uh, it's just my kind of boat. It's brawly, it's, it's got a lot of torps, it's got a lot of guns, it's sturdy. Uh, it's a great ship. Uh, very, very much enjoying this. And uh, it was worth the grind through the rune, even though that was exceedingly painful. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.